What's going on people? Today, really quickly, I want to take you guys behind the scenes and quickly go over how I made the Ben 10 skin Spider-Man and goes ultimate video. So as you know, I ran a competition for the design of Ultimate Spider-Man and it's Danimator 1 that designed. That concept art was sent off to Visions Designs to model the actual Ultimate Spider-Man asset for the video. And he did an amazing, phenomenal, phenomenal? Phenomenal phenomenal job as always but some things i'm going to go over today is motion capture yes i did use motion capture for some of the animation in this video i'm going to go over rotomation i'm going to go over unreal engine really briefly because i use that a lot in this video i'm going to quickly go over the web shooting and again i'm going to talk about some amazing help that i had from animators in this project that this video wouldn't have been possible without them so let's go into it first things first the motion capture i use an app called move one on my iphone for the motion capture so basically you just set your phone up on a tripod and you stand in front of it and uh, do a t-pose just to set the app up then you do your animation you act it out okay so i'm inside of the move one app right now and i have this recording you can see that i'm doing the t-pose to start off with and then i do the animation this is exactly what spider-man was doing in the video and it's pretty decent i mean we can work with that now back when i did this the only way to get this into blender was to share this and generate a code for fbx or a blend file then you had the problem of retargeting that animation onto the model that you wanted to use in my case that was spider-man at the time move ai didn't have a way to do that you had to use alternatives like rococo studio so i used rococo to retarget the animation since i've done that a new update has come out from move ai they've got their own retargeting tool that you can use with blender i haven't tried it out yet but i dare say it'd be pretty good they probably didn't want people using competitors retargeting tools so they've come out with their own which is a great move to move ai speaking of move ai though um i only have the one camera system plan in the past they for free they allowed you to use two or more iphones i believe to get a more detailed motion capture um since they've put a paywall behind that and it is extremely expensive now i was actually really interested into implementing this into my workflow as an indie video creator until i found out that it's two thousand dollars for three months mind you that's us dollars or five thousand per year and I could just not justify spending that, uh, especially when I wasn't very familiar with this technology. It was my first time trying it out. So I just went with the free plan and that worked out great. So basically you need to download this Chrome extension in order to, to download your motion capture animation. Then you get a code and in the app, you will actually see that I've gotten a code. Is it going to focus? Yes. So you just enter this code and it lets you download your motion capture. 663. I'm going to download that real quick and I'm going to download it as a blend file. Okay, and then it gives you this massive blend file scene. There's me and the T-Bows, and here's the animation that we did. That's me. Now, I did have to fix this up a bit. Basically, I just used the Roco... Rococo. Rococo retargeting option to choose the source armature and put that onto Spider-Man. I'm not going to do it now because it's a nightmare and it bugs so much. And also, the alternative move AI's own retargeter is out now so i'm going to experiment with that in the future but i recommend that you guys try it out if you're interested in this and then once i fixed up the motion capture data that's the spider-man shot that ended up in the film that's the only motion capture that i used now inside of unreal engine uh yes this is the what the motion capture data became basically now there was this issue with the hands that's why i did opt to zoom in a little bit and cut that out i couldn't get that fixed in time i actually spun around and did the whole animation myself and then in real life obviously i didn't fall but you don't see that in the video now as for this final web shot uh, what i wanted to happen was for spider-man to shoot the web and it's sort of like it's a long falling out before it attaches to the wall now the way i did this was i obviously rendered the shot first in unreal engine and there was no webs right so the webs the way i did that i tracked the web shooter with a null object right here just disable this layer you can see the null object tracks then you can see what i've done basically what i did with the null object track information i made a trap code particular layer and in the designer, I basically just made it shoot out a stream of particles that obviously look like a web. And that's basically it. That's the effect. Just a long string of webs driven by a single null track. As for when it sticks to the wall, it's literally just a production crate footage file. I use production crate a lot, if you haven't noticed. Obviously, this is missing. It's been deleted. But production crate has a whole bunch of really good uh, web effects 
The classic portal in the sky was again a bunch of production crate files added together. Now let's talk about rotomation. So I'm not very good at rotomation. I have done it uh, a few times, but it's generally for quick scenes like this where you don't really see it much. But basically, the clean footage plate was just uh, me pretending to land as in a Spider-Man costume, like this. And then I came along with the Spider-Man model and roughly animated him to land in. And at a cut point about here, I matched him as best I could to my actual pose from the footage. Then inside of After Effects, I bring that in inside of Element 3D because I like to do all my compositing in After Effects. It's just easier for me. And this is literally the 3D layer here. And it cuts out right here with my original footage. And it goes so fast you can't even tell. I didn't really put much effort into it because it blends really good when the motion blur and everything is turned on. And then I just content aware filled out the background that I was originally in, like so. And it works really well. In hindsight, it's so quick that I probably could have just freeze framed my actual footage, cut it out, and then animated that cut out to come from the sky because it's so quick. But uh, the rotomation detail goes a long way and it works surprisingly well. The last thing I want to go over really quickly is the amazing rig and animation done by Therantha. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. So once Visions Designs sent me the Ultimate Spider-Man model, it had a lot of arms and moving parts that I knew this was way above my league. I couldn't animate this myself, nor could I rig it myself. So I made a post on Instagram asking any professional riggers if they'd be interested in some paid work, and I got a lot of responses, but this one stood out. Therantha had done Ben 10 work before and actually has uh, Ben 10 themed content. So I went with Therantha. Amazing job. Really complex rig here uh, that he created. It's IK, fully IK, pretty much fully IK. Uh, and there is even a lot of hidden parts of the rig extra that are just hidden for simplicity's sake but it is an extremely detailed rig and i'm so like i'm blown away with how detailed this rig is it's amazing therantha actually went and animated the transformation sequence as well for me which i'm really grateful for so the arms obviously pop out and the back legs pop out when he does the pose this again was something that was out of my league i, I couldn't have done this myself and again i have to give a big shout out to kangrade because kangrade I sent this model off to Kangrade with the rig, and Kangrade did the swinging animation. So let's go over that really quickly. Oh, while we're at it, also, yeah, obviously, Humongousaur. Humongousaur's animation was done in Blender and sent over to Unreal Engine. So yeah, Kangrade uh, made the swinging animation with the web and everything, the hands behind the back and falling animation, and I opened that in Blender and re-imported it into Unreal Engine, and it's freaking amazing. I, slowed, I asked him to slow it down at the end, and it's just phenomenal. Like, let me just exit the camera real quick. The attention to detail in this animation is crazy, bro. Uh, obviously, the web didn't align perfectly when I re-imported it into Unreal. It worked perfectly in Blender, but uh, there were some issues changing platforms. I aligned it to match with the camera, and it worked out good for the shot. But yeah, huge shout out to Kangrade for this. This is all one seamless animation. So he starts up here, starts on the top of the building. Obviously, I had to reposition it for each camera cut, but basically he starts on top of the building. Does the spin around, arms down, and falls. And that's all That's all cut up into different camera shots. And it looks freaking amazing. So huge shout out to everyone involved in this project. I hope that you guys learned something from this video and got some value out of it. It's a really quick rush run today. And like always, the assets that I am allowed to share for uh, this project are available on Patreon. So there's the Spider-Man talking shots in all different angles. The Humongousaur on the floor shots. Really huge one here, scan grid effect, so you guys can do your own Ben 10 scanning videos. And a whole bunch of uh, transformation assets that you could align with your own footage that you can use. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.